Hi guys, it's Satchel Winner. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. Quick story. I'm working like a dog at the moment. I don't have any time to smell new things. I don't have time to set up my camera and do the whole green screen, shebang, all of that. So I thought, why not give you guys some perfume porn? And I wanted to do a video about my top 15 fragrances. I want to say loosely at of all time. Uh, and I wanted to do 15 because whoever invented top 10s should just, you know, it's so last year. Let's do 15 because doing top 10 is incredibly difficult. If you're a perfume lover, you will know. It's like asking somebody what's your favourite film. So, <clears throat> um, I've got them all gathered here and they're not really in any kind of order. But this video is for all of you people that sometimes message me uh, or comment and say, you know, I feel like we've got the same taste. What else do you recommend? Well, I recommend these perfumes I'm about to show you. This list or this collection of 15 perfumes pretty much sums up my entire style. I, I'm not a person that has a new favorite every week. I'm, I'm pretty committed. I don't, I don't have a fear of commitment. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I, if you're on Fragrantica, I don't switch my favorite shelf out week to week. I'm pretty constant with stuff like that. Yes, I add new things, but I only ever really change things once a year, maybe twice. So, without further ado, I'm going to show you my top 15 perfumes. These are my holy grails, these are my beauties. Most of them old, but some of them I discovered in the last year or so. So let's just get started. I'm just going to start grabbing them and chatting. Here we go. So the first one is my favourite perfume from the house of Amouage. I have tried, I would say, 85% of their fragrances. It's called Opus 9, and this one, I don't think anything has come close to it yet. It's really hard to put on camera, but it's a glittery uh, red perfume bottle. Just also, side note, any of you guys that are watching this that might follow me uh, or watch my videos quite often, None of these are going to be a surprise. <laughs> Maybe some, but we'll see. But anyway, this one is a crazy... Um, it's a skanky jasmine with pepper and civet. It's very oriental, but I love it because it pushes the skank. It pushes the, the oriental, peppery, already skanky jasmine to the next level because of this civet note. It's semi-challenging. And it's daring and it's a statement fragrance that I wear when I go out and when I wear it I'm always aware that I'm wearing it and it makes me a little bit self-conscious but I really don't care because I absolutely love it. It's part of their library collection and this is a giant thing. I mean it's very narrow that way but yeah this is an absolutely gorgeous fragrance. I adore it and no Amouage fragrance has come close to this one yet and I always try their new ones all the time. This one is the one for me. The next one is by Tom Ford and it's my favourite Tom Ford fragrance. Again, another house that I always try the new releases and none have come close to it. It's White Patchouli. It's going to keep going dark every time I put the, the bottle in, which is kind of annoying, but sorry about that. It's White Patchouli and yeah, nothing's come close. The first couple of times I tried this, I didn't quite understand the opening. It's kind of, it smells a bit like paint or a bit plastic-like. But when you let it get into its stride and you let it do what it needs to do, it reveals to me the facets of patchouli. It never actually smells like patchouli to my nose. This is just my nose though. <laughs> you know, everyone's nose is different or everyone's perception is different. To me, it's the, the collection of notes in here showcase the facets of patchouli in a very glamorous, expensive kind of way. It's like it's taken all of the, the stigma of this hippie patchouli that people say, oh, I don't like patchouli, it's very hippie, and modernized it and made it great. So, just, I wanted to say also, what constitutes a favorite for me is if I already own it and I feel like I need to get a backup immediately, that, that's a big sign to me that this is something special. So for white patchouli, I got myself a backup and I plan to get another one at least, maybe two. That's just how I feel about it. It's, it's 
the love is real for this one, guys. The next one on the list is Portrait of a Lady by Frederick Mao. I, uh, this one, I guess, was kind of like an instant love. And it's one that gets a lot of hype, a lot of chat, a lot of reviewers talk about it. A lot of people that blog, it's just one of those things that got talked about a lot. A lot of people feel like the trend is over. The portrait of the lady love is over. Not for me. I still love this perfume with all of my heart. And this one is, I describe it as a kind of gothic rose. It's, it's a lot of patchouli. It is very incensey as well and it's by my favorite perfumer dominique ropion in my eyes he can do no wrong he makes such beautiful perfumes another one in this list is actually by him and um i call him the flower whisperer he does things with florals that i have never smelled anyone else do he's one of the greats of our time shall we say but this is like a crumbling church gothic rose patchouli thing that has the sillage of a hundred miles. I mean, when somebody wears this, you know they're wearing it. I know I'm wearing it. And one time in a bar, someone said to me, you smell like an Arabian princess. And I said, I'll take that. Oh, cool, that's fine. But Portrait of a Lady is amazing. There's a lovely little uh, bit about it on the back. And he calls it a, a new breed of an oriental rose, Baroque. It's cinnamon, sandalwood, patchouli musk, frankincense. And he said that it contains the strongest dosage of rose essence ever. So yeah. Anyway, this is a gothic church-like rose and I'll always love this one. My one is the second version of it. There was an original version before it got reformulated, which I've never smelled, but I'm happy with this, I'm, I'm cool, I'm not gonna start chasing the old formula. Another side note, this is a little bit of advice I wanna give to everyone, just from my point of view. There are people that are so dedicated to fragrances, like me, I'm dedicated to these ones and I love them, and then something changes, they get reformulated or they get discontinued, and I work in the perfume industry and I have constant people coming in trying to get that that spark back of something they've lost or looking for something that's like the original formula. My advice to you is this, from my heart to yours, sometimes you just gotta let it go. And Stella by Stella McCartney would have been in this list if it hadn't been changed. I let it go and I'm moving on. There are thousands and thousands of perfumes. There's always something more you can find that's gonna make you happy. This was Ouch On My Nose Advice Corner for one minute long. So the next one's a truly wacky one. This is one that I'm gonna tell you, if you wanna give yourself a laugh and some entertainment, go to Fragrantica and look at the reviews of this one because they give me hours of pleasure, I love it. It is MM Inc and it's by Byredo. Byredo? This one, I think if I had smelled this perfume out of the bottle onto a blotter in a shop, I would have disregarded it and never smelled it again and been horrified. Yet, I went to a bar once with friends and one of my friends, Carl, was wearing this. I didn't know who was wearing it at the time, but in our little circle of our table, uh, somebody kept wafting over this amazing kind of laundry, edgy, honey, smoky thing. And I said, what's this smell? And I asked him and he said, oh, it's me. I'm wearing this. It's called MM Ink. It's a truly bizarre fragrance. It's clover honey, ink, obviously, um, incense, and it's got a doxel in it. It's got this molecule which supposedly is very clean. So it's a very juxtaposed perfume. Definitely not blind by worthy. Never ever blind by this perfume because you might be shocked to your core. But getting it on your skin and letting it settle for, I would say, two or three hours, something magical happens and uh, I love it. Some people describe it as hamster cage. I've heard people say things about death and just all kinds of weirdness about this perfume. But this is my, I've always said it's my ugly duckling in my collection. It's the ugly duckling that I view as a swan. So the next one on the list is 
Andy Towers, L'air du désert marocain. I hate saying that word, it makes me sound so awful at French. This is m my most complimented perfume ever. I know that doesn't mean a lot to m many people, but a lot of people do like to purchase and wear fragrances that are garner them compliments. And to put it in there, this is the one that gets the most intrigue from strangers. That's not something I look for in a perfume. It just does it all by itself. It sells itself. This is, I think, I'm guessing Andy Tower's best-selling perfume. And it's one that I read about so much before I bought it. And when I smelled it, I agreed. I was a sheep. I followed. I, I just understood why. It's very unique. It's, it's a spiced... Uh, labdanum. It's a resinous fragrance that's very lightly spiced. It's got a dry quality to it. It's about Moroccan desert air. It's very exotic, kind of mysterious, and projects and lasts forever. It's it's a hundred pounds for fifty mils, which is very steep. But I've had this for many years, and I've still only used half of it because you don't really need to wear a lot of it. I've had people in airports taxi drivers, bars, uh, shopkeepers, when I walk in, just saying, what is this? And, you know, I'm kind of reluctant to tell them sometimes, but sometimes I share. Sorry about the banging, it's very difficult. But Ledger Desert Marocan by Andy Tower is very, very special and will remain in my top 15 forever. So we're gonna move on to my favorite house. No guessing which one it is. If you follow me, you will know. <laughs> and this one is Moth. Um, this was not a love at first sniff. When this fragrance came out, I when I first tried it, I thought it was cool, but I didn't really like it as much as I do now. This is in my top two zoologists out of 17 fragrances that they make. Absolutely amazing. I've shouted about it enough on my channel. It doesn't really, to me, fit any category, and that's why I like it. It's not a floral, it's not a woody, it's not fruity, it's not an amber, it's not an oriental. It's its own thing, and it's the second perfume ever made by Tomu Inaba, an amazing Japanese perfumer, and it's a smoked honey incense. It's dusky, it has dusky florals in it, it has uh, oud in there, but it's not really centered around oud. Oud is kind of the accent of it and it's just adds just this touch of amazingness. I describe it as a hauntingly romantic perfume. It's very strong, it's smoky, soft, honeyed incense and it's very unique and very hard to do, hard to describe until you smelled it or experienced it because on skin, it's incredible and especially in autumn. If you have autumn where you live, if you have the season of autumn, I understand everyone's from all over the world, this one is like an autumn gem. So it's beautiful. I could talk about this one for 10 minutes, but I won't. I'm gonna move on. Remember I said about backups? This next fragrance is a classic example of that for me. I actually used to have many more backups than I'm about to show you, but Dolce & Gabbana Red Cap. This poor fragrance, I feel for it so much. It's been through so much turmoil and badness. It was a massive star of the 90s and then it got discontinued. And then Dolce & Gabbana relaunched D&G. It's called Puffem, but it's known amongst perfume lovers as Red Cap because of this. Uh, they, they relaunched it in this purple bottle and a lot of people were disappointed because it was an entirely different fragrance. It was nothing to do with what this original one was. It's actually a marshmallow gourmand thing. This one is amazing and there's a reason why I hoarded this, or should I say hoard this fragrance a lot. Um, it's, it's just amazing. I, it's so hard to describe, but I will try. It's essentially a floral aldehyde, this perfume. It's got basil in it. It's extremely powdery, but very, very sparkly because of the aldehydes. This one's the Eau de Toilette. This one's the Eau de Toilette. This one here, if you ever want to hunt down the original formula, 
look for this black box here because this is like the new formula but in HD that's the only way I can describe it it's like watching a black and white film from the 40s and then watching the blu-ray HD version of it this is like everything is enhanced it's more sparkly it's more pronounced it's richer it lasts twice as long and it's already a very long lasting fragrance and then this one is the puff under toilette it's a very unusual composition i don't really see uh, can you see that i don't want to make it blurry it's puff under toilette it's kind of in between eau de toilette and eau de parfum so i gathered as much of it as i could i used to have i think two or three more but i gave one to my mother who loves it and i swapped one too so uh, D&G Red Cap is forever going to be a very special fragrance to me. It's been a part of my, I guess, growing up. One of my best friends, well, my best friend's girlfriend used to wear this when we went clubbing. And it was just the scent of my clubbing days, but not me wearing it. <laughs> so that's that one. The next one is another perfume by Dominique Ropion, and he made it for Frederick Mal as well, and it's Carnal Flower. This is, to me, um, well, it used to be the ultimate tuberose. Okay, I'm going to have to phrase this correct. This, to me, is the best tuberose fragrance that there is. So Dominique Ropion wanted to create a tuberose fragrance that showcased every facet of the flower, because tuberose has coconutty facets, it's very green, it's buttery, there's even a eucalyptus type feeling to this one. So it's it's almost like a, if you shone a light through a tuberose and it refracted all of these different facets of the flower. This one's so rich and beautiful and it's still my favourite tuberose fragrance which will lead me on to the next one because I need to explain myself. This one, Amarosa by Ruth Marstenbrook, English perfumer, a recent discovery of mine and two of her perfumes have made it into this video. I said in my spotlight video of hers that this is my favorite fragrance containing tuberose. So I just wanted to clarify, this is my favorite tuberose perfume this is my favourite perfume that contains tuberose because this is about tuberose and this one is more about tuberose is in the opening I think it's more it's more the opening part of the perfume but the dry down is completely different I don't feel tuberose at all so just before anyone starts naysaying and nitpicking what I say <laughs> favourite tuberose perfume favourite perfume that contains tuberose so Amarosa knocked my socks off. It's a very nostalgic perfume to me. It smells like Pantene conditioner. It's soapy and clean and so strong and long lasting. The quality of Ruth Marston Brooks perfumes is uh, just second to none. I absolutely love them. It's creamy, soapy, bright. Uh, tuberose at first, but then it goes into this kind of 90s Pantene feel and absolutely huge fan of this and it's the most recent addition to my top perfumes ever so I had to talk about that one so thank you Ruth I love this I'm gonna continue with Ruth Marstenbrook again another one <laughs> this was the first one of hers that I smelled and I smelled this perfume on a day when I had smelled probably 200 perfumes it was a whole day with a colleague of mine we went to all of the top perfume shops in London well a lot of them the big department stores and a, lot, a few, couple of niche ones this one stuck out among 200 perfumes it's Ruth Marstenbrook again and it's called Signature it's a syrupy pineapple woody oak moss that feels 90s it feels elegant it's so unique and this one lasts for I mean 15 16 hours plus on me it does not go away I've been complimented so many times on it and it's just it's one that I, I really you just need to smell it I can't really go on about that one in depth because it's very unique and unusual and so easy to wear so those two little ones here have become my yeah, in my top 15 ever. 
So there's a few left. Let's carry on. Okay, three left. So this one I always say has remained as my top zoologist perfume, and it's Camel. Moth and Camel for me, they're in a race. They're kind of constantly fighting each other. I don't know who's going to win. I mean, in a real fight, a camel would beat a moth, but in terms of perfume, I don't know. So, camel to me, I love orientals, and this is one of two orientals that Zoologist makes. And I've always said nothing comes close to it yet, apart from this little guy. But camel is beautiful. It's an oriental with a bit of a twist because it has this very pronounced animalic under undertone. It's got dried candied fruit in it. It's myrrh, frankincense. Uh, there's orange blossom in here as well. It's, think about things that camels would carry on trade routes. It's North Africa. It's not a kind of Middle Eastern camel feeling it's not there's oud in it as well but the oud is to me perfectly placed it's not an oud fragrance there's so many other elements that make up this perfume and it's by christian carbonell who's american and he also made panda for them camel i love it's kind of a journey fragrance it's got a lot of elements it's spicy slightly ambery oriental resinous beautiful touch floral perfection so the second to last one is one that i've talked about quite a lot recently and it's by an up and coming rising star perfumer called prin who makes strangers perfumery every time i show this bottle on camera it the name gets blurred out because it's too bright it's manishtana this is an incredible complex incense spiced leather smoke that's the only way i can describe it it's got five or six spices in it nutmeg clove cinnamon allspice Ugh, the list goes on it's I, the reason i love this one is because it's not a typical churchy incense perfume a lot of them go down the kind of frankincense route um you know that kind of sensor type thing and this one to me goes towards more of a temple, Southeast Asia, more Buddhist type incense smell with tons of spice, leather and smoke. And it's very, very complex and beautiful. And I love it. So that one. We had a little bit of shift in time because I totally forgot a perfume. I was putting them aside and aside and aside as I spoke about them and I forgot this one and I'm feel very guilty because it's actually in my top five perfumes ever. It is Nanban by Arquiste. This perfume is so special to me. I work with this perfume every day and I have sold, I don't know, countless bottles of this. It gets quite a lot of attention because GQ magazine voted it as the best, uh, I can't even get it out of the box. Oh my gosh. It's really in there. Uh, the best men's release of 2015. I don't like to think of it as a man's perfume because I have had women buy this from me and men. This is, I don't say it often, but to me it's perfection in a bottle. It's essentially a leather perfume, but I, I consider it more oriental. Let me give you the rundown of the note lists. It's Nambam, which from what I know, um, translates as Southern Barbarian. It's about a galleon, a huge Japanese galleon carrying loads of samurai warriors on a voyage and all of the precious cargo that's on the boat. So this is about a boat. It's about spices and it's tea. It's coffee, saffron, pepper, frankincense, myrrh, leather, smoke, sandalwood. This contains so many of my favourite notes in one contained capsule of goodness that it's in my top five. It's in my top five perfumes ever and I'm so sad that I almost forgot it. <laughs> I had to literally put my camera back out because uh, it got lost in the sea of these bottles. So... Nanban by Arquiste, a French company. 
this is very special and I've never shown this to a person where I work that does not like it. So it's got something about it. There's something special. It's very, very cool. So this is Namban, one of my holy grails that will never go out of my top five, I'll say, ever. So that's that one. And the last one on the list might not be a surprise to anyone ever, <laughs> but I consider it to be my holy grail. Saying that, there will come a day when I will move away from this fragrance and I will leave it alone. For now, I love it because I still have the vintage and it is Samsara by Gillan. This has so many, this is this is in my, my top list because it's, it, it's got so many childhood memories and I feel like it's not timeless but I've been spending this since the 80s since I was eight or nine year, nine years old and I never tire of it and that speaks for something right I, I've never tired of this perfume I still get the magical feelings of it that I felt when I was a child I never bore of this fragrance ever, so I have the vintage Eau de Toilette and I also have the vintage Eau de Parfum. Look at this, when I received this perfume in my haste, I literally tore the box open like a savage. So I have the vintage Eau de Parfum as well. This is the queen of the sandalwoods. It's a jasmine, sandalwood, violet, vanilla, super sillage monster the new version to me is is just not worth mentioning so once these run out for me i will have to wave a gentle and sad goodbye to samsara but for now this is jasmine mysore sandalwood flowing exoticness and it's absolutely exquisite and it still remains my favorite perfume ever and has done since since i can remember so that's my video, I hope you guys like it. I'm gonna uh, edit this and continue my 11 day stretch at work. <laughs> but I needed just a little break to have a little chat with you guys and say hello, and that's it. I'm Matt Shomano, trying to make the world smell better, one video at a time. I'll see you guys soon, goodbye. <laughs>